Let's zoom a little bit deeper now uh, on the broader uh, shift uh, required. So when you have to do a, a significant culture shift, um, what we recommend doing is the culture modeling uh, exercise. So uh, when there is a lot of discussion about how to shift the culture and it's quite significant, it can be quite messy and confusing because there is a lot of viewpoints. That's all the circle that you see at the top of the funnel. So think about the culture modeling process about using a funnel and you throw all these uh, viewpoints about how do we need to change the culture given the shifting environment around us. And the idea is to distill and make choices and set priorities. And what comes at the bottom of the funnel is a culture model that you turn into a visual. And ideally, you will focus on three, four uh, culture traits that are going to be the focus of the shift. In the case of a GSK, you'll see it in a few minutes. It was three uh, uh, um, culture uh, uh, traits that uh, GSK focused on. Uh, and uh, if it's more, you typically have to do a phase approach. Otherwise, it's impossible to do. But the idea is to, it's very important to go through this exercise because otherwise, there is no sense of focus, priorities, and clarity regarding what is it we are trying to do. It's hard to change the culture. So you need to really zoom in and focus on where you are going to uh, 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 really put your effort on. Once you have a culture model, the second thing to do is to think about all the levers about culture, for culture change and how to activate them. So the second slide that we use with clients uh, is, uh, and you've probably seen similar, uh, it's going to be an animation. You've probably seen similar uh, uh, pictures, but it's, think about it as a checklist of all the levers available for culture change. So first, the culture model itself, the fact you have a culture model, it's actually a lever because you go from all this discussion that goes all over the place to now a focused discussion on three or four uh, culture traits. So it's already a, a lever. The first set of levers, the other set of levers are hard levers. And I mean, it's the nature audience. You know that uh, uh, better than anyone. So it's about the systems, uh, the, the physical space, these kind of things. The second set of levers to activate are soft levers. Uh, and again, one of that is very important is uh, stories, symbols, and rituals. Um, but the other ones are very important as well. But there is one lever that is a soft lever that is out of this blue box. Why? Because it's a little bit like the animal farms. Uh, if you remember having read the book, The Animal Farm, all the uh, animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. It's the same thing about the levers. They are important. You will have to activate them uh, uh, in an orderly fashion based on the situation at one point. But there is one that is absolutely critical to activate, that's the leadership. You need to really find ways to bring the leaders on board genuinely, which is where the emotional case is very important, and then work with them so that they can and support them. And you'll see that coming in what Nicole is going to share with you. Uh, really help them be the best they can be to be cultural role models. So that is really the two slides that we use to start to uh, zoom in on the broader culture shift and then start to get going by activating some of the levers. So, uh, uh, Nicole, over to you to uh, uh, share with us what came out of the culture modeling process. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so this is how we at GSK applied those tools and that framework that Edmund just spoke about. Um, you remember he mentioned a visual. Uh, and again, what resonates for our company is on our upper right hand side, you can see the GSK logo, it's the shape of a, a heart, uh, we refer to it as, and so we use that shape in our culture model or our culture plan, so that's the heart. Uh, we also knew there was a long term activity happening, which was new GSK. So around the outside, that's our long term goal. Publicly, it's known that GSK is splitting its consumer company from its pharmaceutical company. And the pharma side of the business was being referred to as new GSK globally within our company. So long term, that's what we were headed towards. New uh, biofarm, I mentioned uh, biofarm before, and that's where we were headed. So that's our long term goal. Uh, and on the inside, of the heart, the orange center is our values and our expectations and what we refer to as IPTC, that's our performance management framework, innovation, performance, um, and to the power of C, to the power of culture. Um, and so those were maintained as part of our model. Basically, we're letting employees know we're not changing those things that are core to us, to our culture, and we're still aligned with where we're headed globally. The middle circle is what Edmund referred to as our focus areas. And I agree with Edmund, three probably max to have people focus on and, and be able to achieve. 
So agility, we've been mentioning from the beginning, nimbleness was absolutely key. Employee feedback and business drivers highlighted that we needed to be more competitive and more innovative. Uh, so again, moving from big pharma to more innovative biopharm, um, more startup mentality. Um, and so those were the three that we identified from all of that feedback. Um, words, as we all know, can have 10 to 100 different definitions. And so it was really key that we provided based on the employee feedback. That was really key. Based on the employee feedback, what did we mean by agility? What behavior and mindset were we asking our employees to demonstrate when we, when we were asking them to be more agile or be more innovative or be more competitive? So those, the subtext there was explaining what we were asking our employees and our leaders to do as part of our culture shift. Um, one thing, so the leadership piece, uh, Edmund mentioned on that last slide, uh, one of the model elements is that leaders are key levers for a culture change. And that is really key in our whole story here in terms of how we brought leaders to the front and we, and we had leaders lead on this culture change. And one of the ways in which we did that is we had a pharma leadership team member uh, be the lead for each pillar. So agility had Jane, competitiveness had in green, and innovation had Perry. Those are names of my partners that I remember. Um, but, uh, it, but what happened is employees started to identify with them. And, and they brought these pillars to life. And they were, they were the lead on that pillar. And employees knew they could go talk to them. Uh, and of course, most companies love acronyms. GSK is a big acronym company. And so our agility, competitors, and innovation started to be referred to as ACI. So that's being referenced there as well. Uh, and we're going to let you hear next from one of our employees who participated. because. These